You recently said that one in six American couples are unable to have a child when they want to, and that last year the birth rate in the United States dropped the most that it ever has in recent history, according to the CDC. 3% in a single year. What does this have to do with wireless radiation? Yeah, that's where the debate is. And actually, it's not local. It's worldwide. And so um, when you talk about a cell phone in your pocket, you talk about a laptop on your lap, you talk about the tablet, the iPad you're using, right in your right next to your groin there is a clear path to interfere with the the uh, fidel uh, the um, the ability to have children that has become more alarming in recent years and guess what cell phone use tablets and devices have increased over that same time period is that correlation just coincidental, or is it truly cause and effect? You decide. Is it true that when you have a phone in your pocket, it's like a two-wave micro microwave radio? Can you explain that? I'm going to answer that in two ways. You called it a microwave radio. I'm going to call it a microwave. When you have a, a microwave oven, I don't use one, but if you had one in your kitchen and you put your meat into the into the microwave and you closed it and you cooked it for a bit what's going on it turns out the water between the cells are getting hot and it oscillates the cells ultimately cooking your food 2.3 watts 2.3 uh, gigahertz wi-fi is 2.4 gigahertz it's the identical frequency in other words it is a microwave oven that is known to be a thermal emitting signal that can cook your phone. When I mentioned before about the cell phone to the head, I said two degrees. It's a microwave. It's heating up your the area of your head, and that's what it is. And so when you put a device like that in your pocket, particularly front pocket, by the way, it is transmitting um, constantly. Because there's GPS in a connection, that there's pinging that goes on. Where, where are you? Where are, where are you today? And so you're getting emissions that are like a radio communication, but for functions of the cell phone. If I put that cell phone, if if I put my arm up, and I tell you push my arm down, and you push it down, you'll find resistance. If I take that cell phone that has that two-way microwave and I put it right next to your heart or my heart and you push my arm down, it'll have less resistance. It's literally interfering with your body function, the control of body function. Does my local town have the right to say no to 5G or is it just a national thing? No, they don't have the right. What the FCC did was they had decreed through law that the local municipality cannot decide that a cell phone tower can or not be in, uh, installed. They lost that. They're allowed to talk about some aspects of it, but not the health aspects that I mentioned before. So they really have taken out the responsibility of the jurisdiction um, that the local municipalities have for um, the, the growth of their town. That's unprecedented. It's not happened anywhere else. Should schools ban Wi-Fi in classrooms, and why? So there's no doubt they should ban Wi-Fi in the classroom. And I'm going to explain why. A cell phone is 1.6 watts. I, I mentioned that. I can measure that strength of that signal by putting a meter inside. If I go into a classroom where it's Wi-Fi enabled, where all the kids are working on their laptop and and you have the, the repeaters and the routers within the room, that signal could be dot five watts, about a third of a cell phone. That's constant at two to four gigahertz, typically. I wrote an article 
five years ago, and I called it Guns in the Classroom. Why? For the last 50 years in war, we've generated our signals to interfere with the enemy. The power levels are much less, but they're used in warfare. And now we have it in the classroom. And it's dot five watts, six hours, seven hours at a time. I personally believe, and there's some testing evidence that suggests it, that it does influence the kids, and, and it's not in a positive way. Should we assume that all cell phones are properly tested for safety before we're allowed to purchase them, and that if there was any risk to the public for wireless radiation, that we would be told? You're the only one that can decide if you're, you're safe. Certainly, it, it makes no sense to think others will keep you safe. And so um, the way industry tells you it's safe is by the manufacturer running their own tests that says we are within the bounds defined by the FCC. It's not an independent study where the manufacturer sends it testing, and it's based on a dummy. They have a simulation. When, you, when they do their testing, they go to a dummy, uh, and it's, it's a gelatin that's in it, which looks like basically a human head. And so this dummy, is, they're looking for thermal impacts and, and penetration. Um, do I trust that? No. Um, you can assume it can drip up to 1.9 watts because FCC allows that drift. Um, and in no way can you believe that you are safe because it seems to me it's slightly loose, um, uh, the, the process of ensuring compliance with the FCC. Why have over 200 scientists called for a moratorium on the rollout of 5G? Why do they think it'll substantially increase exposure to radio frequency radiation that's been proven to be harmful for humans and the environment? That's sort of the sad part about this. It's sort of the voice. There are so many experts that are in the position of knowledge based on years of experience that talk about the impact, the biological impact of the cell. And they recently, as you're pointing out, went to the FCC and they said, this is not good. You're worried about the thermal. And we know there's a huge preponderance of evidence saying that there's a biological. So it was really a little bit of desperation on the side of the science and research side of the industries to convince the legislation of the services we receive um, to think about other standards where they need to be. And so between, if you look at the data, it's indisputable, and that's what they're saying. It's indisputable that we know for sure by looking at all the data that's been developed by well-crafted studies, by experts knowing how to operate those studies, by peer review, meaning others have said, is it make sense or not? There's so many of them that it's hard to believe that it's not sufficient to, at the very least, have a review of the standards. That hasn't happened. By the way, um, uh, uh, WHO, World Health Organization, uh, let me tell you a little bit about that and, and the standards. Uh, they call RF a 2B carcinogenic. 2B carcinogenic says it's possible, it's possible that it is a um, cancer-causing element in our environment. Um, the draft of their conclusion actually showed it as 2A. 
It's a probable carcinogenic. But let's talk about 2B. What does that mean? Arsenic is a 2B carcinogenic. If a, your welding and the, and the exhaust from the welder comes up, that's considered a 2B carcinogenic. Um, petroleum products that have gas oil, volatile organic compounds from the gases themselves, which is a course, which are um, volatile organic compounds, um, that is a 2B carcinogenic. So think about it this way. You go into the classroom, you're the parent, and you have your child next to you, and I'm telling you how we're going to conduct our business over the year, and I tell you that we have Wi-Fi for everyone here. Oh, no, by the way, we also have welding going on in the room. And when we don't have the welding going on, we have open gas cans generating emissions. So hopefully that's OK with you, because it's a 2B carcinogenic. As a parent, what would you think? It's a 2B carcinogenic. Any one of those are a carcinogenic. And yet, we think it's acceptable that Wi-Fi is in a classroom. And the reason was why it was 2B, they didn't have enough statistical significant data. So NTP, we spoke about that before, Ramazani study, they are statistically significant. So many of the members that had decided it's 2B have already claimed it's 2A to the public. So it's just the fact that who hasn't met recently to change that rating, that classification.